The first one I'm opening up is a version 16 line model. So we've got a number of tendons. Uh, let me just uh, have a look at this in a bit more detail if I switch off the fleshing. You'll see that it is just a simple spine beam model. So that's the, where the main sections are. We've got some columns here. Uh, the columns are connected to the, the main uh, superstructure using a constraint equation. And if I just switch back on the fleshing, I can go to the sections and switch one of those off. And invisible. And you can see it's a, a multicellular box structure that we're working with here. So this is a, a, a very simple uh, line beam analysis. Um, it's going to be good for global longitudinal effects, but because it is a, a line beam, it does have the sort of um, shortcomings that lines have. In fact, I can't really look at the transverse analysis using this structure. So I'm going to open up another model. So this was created in version 17. It's the same basic structure, but this time we formed it using shell elements. So we've got the structure here. If I switch off the fleshing, you'll see that it's got shell elements. And if I go to the end and switch off this section here, invisible, you'll basically see that it's that same multicellular box structure that we were looking at before, basically. Let me switch the ends back on. So it's a simple a model, but it, it, it's good for looking at the, the post-tensioning. Now, at the moment, we've got the post-tensioning load assignments for three of the webs, but I haven't got the post-tensioning assignment for this web here. So the right external web hasn't been created. So let's go through and create that. Now, before I do that, I'll show you that I've already created a right external web profile. So this is the, the profile vertically and also on the incline that we've created. And we've created a tendon properties. Now, these sheets are very similar to what were used in the multi-tendon wizard before. These have now been turned into utilities that you can bind in the load attributes. Now, for this simple example, we're not considering elastic shortening. And here I'm using uh, approximate uh, losses. If I wanted to use one of the concrete material models, so such as CEBFIP, I could use that on the model and use losses based on inputs from the calculated uh, stresses, effectively. Now, to create a new tendon load attribute, I go to the Attributes tab in the tree view, Loading. And down here, I've now got this tendon load. Next. The tendon load allows me to choose which of the profiles I want to work with and which of the properties. I've only got one in this case. And it then allows me to set the, the jacking load on the tendon. So I'm going to put that in as 1,500 kilonewtons. I can choose to jack from one end, the other end, or in this case, I'm going to jack from both. And I'm going to set the angle as zero and the slip as three millimeters. So 0 0.003 because I'm working in meters. And I'm going to call this uh, right external web. And if I hit finish, it then turns it into a load attribute here. Now, I want to assign it to the surfaces representing this inclined web here. Now, to save time, I've already created a group of those surfaces. So if I just right hand mouse button on that group, select assignments, it will have picked these surfaces here. I can then use the load assignment as I would any other attributes. I can just drag and drop. I'm going to choose to add it to the post-tensioning load case here. And you should see the fourth tendon appear on my structure now. So I can then save the model, solve it, and show you the results of this shell model with the post-tensioning. OK, so that's run. And you can see the post-tensioning loads are giving me a deflected shape. So you can see the deflected shape being pushed up due to the post-tensioning. If I look at the low case one, which is gravity, I set that active. Obviously, that's creating a sagging effect on the structure. And the post-tensioning is there to counteract those dead load effects. Now, one thing I just want to talk about here as well. If you've got an existing version 16 post-tension model, if it's being created using the single tendon wizard, those loads will be remembered and the model will just work in 17. If you use the multi-tendon wizard in version 16, when you import that model into version 17, 
the old loads created by the wizard will automatically be converted to the new tendon loads and your model will just work as if you'd created it in version 16.